Hello there, students. Today I'm going to teach you how to survive the first bit of Rain World. Rain World is a pretty hard but very rewarding experience. And there is a fun game in here, I assure you. Contrary to what the media will tell you. This tutorial will cover everything needed to get you through the first level of the game, Outskirts. It will cover spoilers, insofar as I will talk about everything in Outskirts without warning further, including full map instructions and hostile strategies. So the first thing that is going to happen when you boot up the game, at least on PC, is having to choose between controller or keyboard. Now let me tell you right now, you can play this game to completion and get every single currently existing achievement perfectly fine with either control method. I will also tell you that keyboard is nice and perhaps required for some of the deeper, more hidden movement tech that's possible in this game. It's only important if you want to be fancy or do speedrunning later on. I personally play with a 360 pad because I don't care about the fancy movement tech, honestly. The second thing you'll decide on is playing Monk or Survivor first. This might change in an upcoming update, but for now I highly recommend just playing Survivor for your first playthrough. For various reasons I won't get into for it being spoilers to end for time. Monk may look like an easy mode that is good for first timers, it might be recommended as an easy mode from other people, it is in some ways, it is not in others. I do not consider it a true easy mode myself. Just play Survivor to make an easy decision for yourself. You might notice my slug cat is green instead of Survivor's white. This is because I'm using a mod and I just want to be green. Because I am green. Ignore that part though, this is just cosmetic. I am still playing as the Survivor underneath this for demonstration purposes. Rainworld has a vibrant modding scene, and that's worth checking out on its own, if you are on PC and interested, raindb.net for any of that. So when you first start up, the game will give you some brief and simple text tutorials. Note that this isn't all the controls or situational stuff in this game at all. You're expected to learn the rest of it with experimentation or community guides, such as this one, kind of. I won't teach you everything, sorry. You'll get to learn some basic moves, you need food to survive, and food comes in two main shapes at first. These blue fruit things don't at me, lorehounds, I swear to god, and bats! The bats can be hard to grab, consider throwing a rock or a spear at them if they elude you. Once killed, they are edible, they are edible alive or dead. Why do you want to eat? Because you need to have a full or overly full stomach in order to sleep in the hibernation safety dens. These are secure spots in the world that will save your progress, let you grow your karma level, and reset the rain timer. Oh yeah, about that. Every time you wake up from hibernation, there will be a countdown you can pop up with RB or R1 that counts down to when the rain starts. The rain will start easy, letting you attempt to get to safety, and eventually kill you, wherever you are, mostly. There is no autosave, there is no saving other than the hibernation dens. Be aware that quitting the game in between hibernation dens will lose you a karma level. What is Karma? Karma is a more obvious leveling system the game has. It, it dictates a couple hidden things, but the main thing you'll want to worry about right now is that there are doors to other regions that have a Karma level requirement. You have to sleep for enough sleep cycles in order to access these other regions and progress through the game and the great game story. Every time you die, either by creature or rain or pit of death or explosion, you lose a Karma level. That is, unless you eat a karma flower that exists in various spots in the world. Once eaten, a karma flower will protect you from falling a level, but only once per karma flower. A karma flower exists here, near the start of outskirts. Be aware as well that fruit will eventually regenerate after enough cycles as well, but it's easier typically to just seek out new food spots instead of going to the same ones. So. About those beasties, let's start talking about the creatures that exist in Rain World and how to fight, survive, and avoid them. The first thing you're likely to meet are lizards. Lizards come in all shapes and sizes throughout Rain World, but there are three main types in Outskirts specifically. All lizards are armored at their head. A thrown spear will bounce off of their head. You have to get behind them or flip them to get at spearable flesh. A stone or trash thrown at their head will also flip them and stun them, allowing a quick spear throw into them. Every lizard type has a different amount of health, or rather, amount of times you need to stick a spear into them to kill them. Greens are very lazy and slow, and you can usually just walk around or jump over them quickly, which is good because they take a lot of spear hits to kill you and aren't worth bothering with usually. There is a slight chance that greens can rear up to catch you as you're jumping over them, 
but it's fairly low, honestly. When a lizard is chasing you through tunnels, be aware you are at your hot fastest when facing the right way in a tunnel. You can sometimes get into tunnels going the wrong way, and you'll be slowed down by backing up instead of going forward. To turn around in a tunnel, hold the jump button in the direction you want to shift to. Also be aware that really an advanced lizard strategy is pick your fights. Do you have a spear? If no, run away, return later, seek high ground, stand your ground at a high place out of reach. Sometimes not fighting at all is smarter than picking a losing fight. Each lizard type has different mechanics attached to it. Some of them can climb, some have projectiles. Learning the differences will slowly save your life more and more. It might not feel like you're learning anything when you're actually learning a lot every time that you fight and die to any specific creature in this world. Pink lizards can climb poles and outskirts, but not perfectly. Lizards can also use the lizard-specific tunnel system around outskirts to teleport around. You'll see a brief flash of color when a lizard is about to pop out of a lizard tunnel. Next beastie, pole plants, or mimics. These are plants that are mimicking climbable pipes in the world. You can usually tell what they are if you pay attention to the signs long enough. Once a pole plant grabs you, it will drag you into its pipe and kill you. You can save yourself at this stage if you have a spear in hand. Spearing the pole plant will make it release you. You can also spear it before you ever have to jump near it at all. You can also go by it safely if it's perpendicular to a pipe by just holding left or right and not touching up or down at all. This is actually kind of hard on an analog stick. If you're on a controller, stick to the D-pad for just this action. If you're like me in this game and use analog all the time for everything else. Attached to outskirts are three different regions you can go to, each going to a different region with completely different fauna and flora and hazards, each with a different karma level requirement. They are, from the start of the region, generally heading north, west, and south. None of these regions are exactly a wrong choice to go to, and Rain World wants you to explore everything eventually. But if you want to know the door to head to for concrete progress and what is a nice jump up in difficulty without being insane, it's the north door that leads to industrial complex that you want to head to. There are shelters and save points here, here, and here on the map. Just a word of warning, but there is very little reason to head to the right on this region in particular. That changes from region to region. Here, the right zone is just Green Lizard Central. So if you want to fight a bunch of green lizards, you can't go there. It's just not much point to it if you just want progress. And with that, I hope you'll be able to get through outskirts and experience the rest of what Rain World has to offer. This isn't all the info you'll need to survive in Rain World, not by a long shot, but it's a good starting foundation to build off of. Keep at it, don't get frustrated, and be open to learning the mechanics of the world as you explore. If you drop down to level zero karma, that just means you need to learn more about the region that you're in and learn more about surviving in it. I believe in you and I believe that you can do it.